we in vedic astrology believe that everything is happening in our life because of past life karmas since the starting of time you have been through multiple lives you have done multiple karmas at least 10 karmas per day we do major karmas living aside the nitya karmas the daily karmas that even if you live for 100 years and do 10 karmas every day there is a lot of karma that you have done since the starting of time all of this karma is sanchit out of this sanchit in this particular life you are going to face a particular set of karma this may not be related to the previous life maybe in previous life you have done a good karma but at the time of death in the previous life based on your intentions based on your desires based on what you have in your mind the sanchit karma sorry the prarabdh karma of the next life is decided says bhagavad gita that whatever one thinks at the time of death the same approach they get in the next life for this particular reason it is told that while dying one should remember god and one cannot suddenly remember anything that they have not remembered for a lifetime hence for this particular reason one should be spiritual fine so whatever you are going to have in this particular life whatever manifestation of karma you are going to have in this particular life is prarabdh karma for this life what is destined what is fated for this life and that is seen through the natal horoscope sages of astrology have told that the result of karma and its manifestation is seen through vedic astrology like something is seen in a dark room with the help of a lamp how this manifestation of karma will be is with respect to horoscope and when you understand horoscope at a deeper level you also understand what is causing this type of karma it is called vedic astrology because it is based on the belief the seed of which is found in the vedas and elaboration is found in upanishads puranas and all of what is called as vedant and it strongly believes in the law of karma that whatever one have to reap the seed of it is in what you have done in previous life now talking of karma there is a story in i think garud puran it is there that there was a king in the starting of this like yuga there was a king he was into the de into devotion he was doing austerities for very long but despite that he was not getting any result he was not getting salvation so he was very tense because of it to help him lord narad came and as lord narad came in front of him he told his story that i have been renunciate for thousand of years have been doing all the karmas have been worshiping gods and have been doing everything but still i find no peace i find no salvation what is the problem nara tells him that every person is born of three types of death devarin pitrarin and rishirin the death of the gods the death of the ancestors and the debt of the sages because of the debt of the gods because they have given you life they have given you resources they have produced this earth and all of these things you should worship god you should talk about god you should think of god and you should tell other people about god because of the debt of your ancestors because they have produced you they have given birth to you with some hopes and aspirations you should further produce children and continue the lineage and because of the debt of the sages because they have produced knowledge for you they have written books they have guided you about life and how to do things they have shared their experiences with you in form of advices written and oral using which you don't have to go through the same experience again and you can benefit through their experience you will have to spread knowledge now out of these three types of karmas because you are not fulfilling the debt of your ancestors because you are not getting married because you are not producing children you are not getting salvation but today when you see hindu religion 
celibacy, finding God, being an ascetic is said to give salvation. Is it true? Is it not? The scriptures sometimes say that being householder is the best. Sannyasis don't get moksha and all of these things are there. It is not dependent on that householder will get salvation or the ascetic will get salvation. It is dependent on which path is for you. And there is no better boat than astrology to help one cross this ocean of life, says Ramahir. And I will say you that there is no bigger knowledge except for astrology that one can have in this human life. Astrology is the only knowledge that gives you answer about everything. Not only answer, they gives you solution also in form of advice, in form of planning, in form of remedies. So basically, how to identify which debt is maximum in your life? What is that debt that you have to primarily pay to have the life of satisfaction and contentment? I will not talk of salvation. I will talk of salvation while living in this life. I will talk of happiness while living in this life. I will not talk of contentment after death. I will talk of contentment while living in this life. So planets, I will categorize into three categories. Sun indicates God. Devarin it will indicate. The debt of the gods. What to do for the debt of the gods? You know. Think of God, be into spirituality. Tell people about spirituality. Spirituality. Moon indicate ancestors. So Pitrurin, being a householder, being a good householder, earning money, donating one-tenth of that income, loving your life partner, doing all your familial duties with complete dedication and devotion, producing children, making them good beings, making them good living beings, making them good people who contribute in the society is from is the paying the debt of the ancestors. Coming to Mars, Mars also indicate debt of the ancestors because Mars is taken as the son of mother goddess Earth. So that is once again the debt of ancestors. Mercury, Jupiter, Venus. They are the three planets that indicate knowledge. And because they indicate knowledge, they indicate the debt of the sages. And to repay the debt of the sages, what you have to do, you have to learn. You have to be into philosophy. You should have the thrust for knowledge, the thrust for learning, the thrust for experimentation. The karma that you have to gain the knowledge that is available, further enhance it with your experience and then give that knowledge back to the world. By being a teacher, by writing books, by training people, by giving sermons, the debt of the sages are over. Saturn, once again, indicate the debt of the gods. Rahu and Ketu also indicate the debt of the god. In that scenario, Ketu indicates the debt of the god, whereas Rahu also indicates the debt of the ancestors that you have to pay. Now, depending on these planets, there is a debt that you should pay or there can be more than one debt. Also. For an example, Jupiter does not only indicate the debt of the sages, but also indicate the debt of the gods as well. Venus, because it indicates the sperm, also indicates the debt of the ancestors as well as debt of the sages. So some planets have more than one debt also. Rahu, as I have told you, indicates the debt of the ancestors also, indicates the debt of the gods also. Now, how to find the debt? Now, there is one important. Kendra is the linchpin. Lagna, ascendant is the point where the god have touched your life. This is the, you know, we say to, chil we say to children that children are born because of the blessings of God. This is not just the answer to make people understand, to make small children understand how children are born, but is actually reality. 
whether you get a good child or you get a bad child is the manifestation of the biggest punya. The one who have done the greatest of good karmas will get a good children. The one who have done the worst of bad karmas will do bad, will have bad children. She is our sastra. I'm not saying it. The authoritative texts of Hinduism say it. Lagna is the point where the divinity have touched your parents and have decided the type of life that you are having. Lagna is the prime manifestation of karma. The complete horoscope is based on the ascendant. The complete horoscope is blueprint of karma and the ascendant is the deciding factor. Ascendant decides which planet will go into which house, which planet will be good for you, which planet will be bad for you. 85% of astrology, the ascendant decides. I am talking of the astrology which works. I am talking of predictive astrology. So you have to find the most powerful planet in Kendra. The order will be seventh house being the weakest followed by Lagna, second most powerful, fourth house, third most powerful, tenth house, most powerful. So you have to see if there is a planet in all the four Kendras, you will choose the planet in the most powerful Kendra, tenth house. If that is not the case, then in that, if there is planets in only two Kendras, you say seventh house and first house, then you will choose the strongest Kendra first house. If there is planet in only one Kendra, then there is no choice left that only one planet is indicating the karma. If there is no planet in any of the Kendra, then you will go by their lots. Based on the order, who will find which planet is powerful. A planet is most powerful when he is exalted plus retrograde. Second most powerful, only exalted or retrograde. Third most powerful, Moultric own sign. Fourth most powerful, own sign. Fifth most powerful, Vargottam. Vargottam and own sign is equivalent. Sixth most powerful, and friendly sign. Then inimical sign. Then debilitation. So based on the strength, you will find the most powerful planet. If there is no planet in the Kendra, then based on the lot of the Kendra, if the lord of the two kendras gets exalted, say lagna lord and tenth lord, both is exalted, then based on the principle that tenth is more powerful than the ascendant, you will go by the tenth lord. That will basically indicate the type of debt you are having. Now, you can go deeper into it. For a particular example, you say tenth lord is very powerful or there is sun in the tenth lord. So that means it indicates the debt of the gods. Now, if this sun is with moon, then emotional attachment to God is how you have to repay this debt. If this sun is with Mars, then propagating the order of your God, telling people about your God and the Godhead is how you will repay the debt. Mercury, writing book about the God. Jupiter, having a spiritual group to discuss about the God. Venus, making temples for the God. Saturn, doing service for the God. Rahu, eradicating the misconception about the God and educating people, revealing the true nature of the God to the public. And Ketu, by donating things in the name of the God, is how you should serve the people. In the same manner, I have hinted at you the basic significations for every planet. Based on these planets connected to the one who is indicating the type of debt you are having, you can decode the prime debt you are having. And once you start doing it, based on your horoscope, you will see that your contentment in life, your happiness in life, have manifold increase. Your life have gone from chaos to silence. You are feeling inner satisfaction and things are going the way you wanted it to. In nutshell, you will be more contented, you will be happier than what you are once you start following this advice. Do it for your own, do it for your near and dear ones and you will know what I am. Keeping in mind, 
the curiosity related to karma. Keeping in mind that according to the base of Vedic astrology, karma is the foundation of our happiness and misery. Karma is the answer to everything. Why this is happening to you? Why only you? Why this good or bad is happening to anyone? Past life karma is the answer. Keeping that in mind, I have decided to do a six class course back to back from 13th to 18th March on different aspects of karma, where I will be teaching you about a planetary combination in your horoscope, what karma it indicates, what will be the effect of that karma, when that karma will manifest, how that karma will manifest, and if that karma is bad, what corrective measure, yantra, mantra, tantra, tantric remedies, spiritual remedies, behavioral remedies that you can do to ease the suffering created by that karma, and if that is a good karma, how you can enhance the good result of that karma in detail in this course where I will be covering more than 500 combinations. We will be giving you many techniques in the course. If you are interested in this course, don't think anything. It is even suitable for those beginners who can identify that there is Mars in the fourth house in Aquarius Rashi and Mars have fourth, seventh and eighth aspect. If you can identify this in a horoscope, you are very suitable to join the course. Don't wait. Join the course as soon as possible. Because it is, it will be life-changing. In the end, I should tell you, Kanagdhara Stotram, you must have heard about. How this Kanagdhara Stotram was written by Sankaracharya. So once what happened, Sankaracharya was asking for alms home to home. He visited home of an old lady who gave him a gooseberry. Amla, amle ka fal. Gooseberry fruit. That lady was very poor. So he told to Sangrachar that I cannot give you anything, but I only have this gooseberry at home. So this is the best I can offer you. Please accept it. Sangrachar became emotional by her condition. So next day, Sangrachar visited her home and prayed to Goddess Lakshmi, invoked Goddess Lakshmi and asked the reason of her suffering. Goddess Lakshmi told that in previous life, she have not done any donation. And the one who does not donate, does not get wealth in the next life. Because of this particular reason, she is suffering. Sangracharya asked for a remedy and Goddess said that she cannot do anything in front of previous life karmas. Everyone is bound by the result of previous life karma. Even it is told in Bhagavad Gita that like a calf can find his mother cow in a herd of hundred cows in the same manner a karma search for the person who have committed it and gives the result. To ease the suffering, to soothe the suffering of the lady, Sangrachari created Kanagadhara Stotram. Right. So, right now with this, what we know that financial suffering is caused by not donating things. So if someone is going through financial suffering, you know that donation needs to be done. And once people start donating, what to donate, when to donate, where to donate, all this should be astrologically decided. And once you start doing this, your financial condition slowly, slowly starts improving. Many such tips, tricks and techniques will be taught in the invaluable course that I'm doing from 13th to 18th March. Right?